Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. This is going to be a best of seven that I cast solo as part of Africa World number 106. Usually I cast them duo with uh, Laughing Games, but he was six, so I got to cast it solo. I am posting it on the channel. Go ahead and check out other broadcasts where I'm casting live StarCraft 2 professional games featuring players like this at uh, Laughing Games' YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description here for you, okay? And I'll see you after the cast. So yeah, gonna be a best of seven here. Featuring a PVT starting on Neo Humanity. Gonna be a ton of fun. GLHF. Awesome stuff. Woof! Yeah, Neo Humanity. For some reason, the first two games here... Or the first two series, both players uh, vetoed Neo Humanity pretty much immediately. Neither of them, none of the four players involved wanted to play Neo Humanity, but it's the first map here for Cure and Hero. So I don't know what that's all about. What's up, Time to Tell? Thanks for giving 25 cents to the players today by clicking the claim code button at Match Arena. Appreciate everyone who's done that, especially Phoenix of War, for his use of the claim code button and for a $50 donation that goes directly to these players. Obviously, whoever wins this will get more of that 50 bucks. But it will be split among all four players evenly, I think. I know for sure the winner gets more cash out of it, which is awesome stuff. Cure needed a minute. That's okay. We can respect it, Cure. Uh, we needed a second break between the last best of five and the best of seven anyway. So it's all good in the hood. I like how one of the options in game is game duration. Like, you can set it to, like, the game ends after five minutes, which is weird. Like, does anybody ever use that option? I don't know that they do. It seems seem strange. Anywho. ka -chow, Let's get on in. Neo Humanity. It's probably the weirdest map in the map pool, but I like it for that reason. It's very fun as a result. So... As we come on in, bottom right, it's Cure. He's our red Terran player. Top left, it is Hero. Neo Humanity is fun because we have these little rich Vespian geyser bases not too far away from each other, right? We've got this super fun slow zone where you can knock down these little debris things to trap people inside and kill them. We've seen games where an army is sitting in here. The enemy does this collapsible debris stuff and the army dies. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. It should never happen, but man, it has happened a couple times on my channel for sure. Strangely enough. I know it's weird, but it has definitely occurred. So, Cure, not proxying. Hero, not proxying either. Cure has been someone who's been pretty into three racks openers against Protoss and just kind of killing him on a three racks play. Haven't seen him do that today, at least not against Classic. Classic was being a little bit too aggressive, I think, for that to work for Cure. But when he's been given the opportunity, he is just going on racks expand. So I don't know if he's decided the three racks against Protoss isn't super viable anymore or if it was too predictable. And he's trying to use different strategies. But either way, yeah, I, re I mean, I definitely recommend keeping your opponents on their toes. If you become known as the dude that three racks is every TVP, then people are going to prepare for it and you're just not going to work anymore. Simply not going to work anymore. Cybercore on the Reaper hop-up spot into an expander Rooney from Hero. ka -chow. Great timing on that. Cure is checking to make sure there's nothing crazy happening over here and then expanding himself after the racks. Reaper on the way. As we mentioned, Reaper hop-up spot denied. Completely shut down. So if you're a PVT fan, this has been a really good uh, Afrika for you, huh? SCB comes on up, says, aha, you have a second base. That's excellent information to have. I'm just going to go home now. I'm good. I don't really have to worry about too much. You know, Classic proxied me twice in the last series, but uh, zero proxies from Hero today. Getting warp gates, working on adepts, gases, working hard. Reaper shows up. Adept is already out. Reaper's not going to get anything done. Bunker up from Cure. So pretty normal stuff here, right? This is what Cure's been doing when he's been allowed to do it today against Protoss opponents. 
is get a bunker up, get a factory rolling, get right into Widowmine drop production. Hero feels watching the previous games. He knows that Cure has been on a very solid Widowmine drop strategy today, which, hey, hasn't every Terran player been on a really nice Widowmine drop strategy for a long time now? But look at this. It's a Hellion. Is he trying to fake out? Is he trying to make Hero think it's a Widowmine drop by making something in the factory? I don't know. How's Hero going to have vision over here? I guess if you open Stargate, an Oracle could show up, but... No, this is Hellion. He's not hiding it. He's got a Hellion out. Hellions do bonus damage versus Adepts, but Adepts do bonus damage versus Hellions too, so it's kind of this... No one really has an advantage set up there, which is interesting. Stalkers are insanely good against Hellions. But this is just more of an anti-adept setup back here. Not really that that's what's happening, but hey, who knows. Hallucinated Phoenix on the scout around. Sees the Widowmine burrow in. Sees the starport. Sees the factory. Says, okay, cool. So probably Widowmine drops are in my future. Blink on the way from Hero. Working on a robo. And it's time. Let's go. Medivac on the way. Hero's got a third base just now starting to warp in. Is he going to have Blink before the Medivac shows up with that Widowmine drop? I guess we'll have to find out, won't we? Just going to have to find out. Medivac, dive bombing in. Stalker count, a little scarily heavy. Widowmine. Yo, kills a sentry. That's almost a better target than a single probe. I like it. I like getting a sentry kill. That's fantastic. Sentries are gas, man. With gas heavy unit, spellcaster, very good. Guardian shield, force fields, hallucination. All very useful things against Terran. Hero. So this is a bit too many stalkers for just a tiny poke, you know? This feels like a blink assault of some kind if he feels okay about it. I mean, Siege Tank is up in the main base. Blinking up here is going to be a little bit tough. Observer coming in to give the vision required for a blink up into the main base. Yeah, Marine says, uh-huh, there's a ton of stalkers down there. Siege Tank is covering pretty much this whole area, though. So, yeah, Stalker is back out. Just sharking around, just trying to find any kind of damage they can get here against Cure. Third base rolling quite nicely from Hero. He's got charge on the way. And he blinks up into the natural base, getting a couple SCVs. The one's on the gas, one building a supply depot, too. And just going for whatever's available damage here, right? Taking down a refinery would be pretty awesome. Can't quite get it. The repair should show up here. And there it is. Repair on the refinery. Kind of a pretty animation with that fire, isn't it? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. <laughs> Third base on the way from Cure, but he's been down a base for some time. Two, three minutes at least already in just a six-minute game. But once again, if you don't have any splash damage against this Marine Marauder Medivac army, it's going to be tough for you. Yeah, look at this. See? He's like, please walk through this slow zone. Or just going to preemptively block it. Fair enough, I guess. Force Cure to take an alternate path around. Slow him down a tiny bit. It is 67 to 53 army supply. And uh, this is looking a little bit tough. Guess who just warped in Zealots? Oh, gosh. All right. Right into the main base of Cure. Absolutely problematic. Look at him sniping down Widow Mines after taking shots here. Marauder's not very good against Zealots either. Hmm. Cure says, okay, we cleaned that out. Let's wipe this. 
Okay, force field up. Shield battery overcharge, but focusing the shield battery. Nice! A little bit trapped in here with these force fields, but there are stalkers and immortals, and they're not going to trade very well against uh, marines and marauders regardless. Ooh, a pickup. Nope. Stalkers blinked in. Medivacs died enough stalkers to just obliterate this army. It does take a lot of stalkers to take down a marine marauder army with stim and medivac support, and Hero simply had enough. Eight probes did die. Nexus stays alive. That's kind of a huge deal. Army value is now 45 to 37 in favor of Hero. And he finds... Okay, fine. A Hellion over here. A couple Marines out on the counterattack. Hero is on the warpath. He's getting a Robo Bay behind this as well. And a Warp Prism. But he's like, can I just win this here? I don't know. I don't know if you can win this here, my friend. I don't mind not getting any connections. Hero marching in, feeling like he owns the place. Zealots making mincemeat of the SCVs pulled to try to block against this. And blinking forward, GG! Hero! Ends up taking game number one here. Fantastic display of a Protoss defense against a nice Marine Marauder attack. And then just able oh, to beautifully counterattack there. No splash damage required in nine minutes. And just absolutely shutting it down. That was, man. That was just macro. That third base was up and rolling for way too long for a two basing Terran to really come in and shut it down at all. And the counterattack was beautiful. So we're moving into Dragon Scales for game number two here. Hero seems really on top of things in his PVT. And again, he's probably the best Protoss player on Earth right now. So Cure's got his work cut out for him. Again, it's a world where Protoss has been struggling a little bit. So I'm sure every Protoss fan and player watching this is feeling pretty happy about that game one result. Yeah, top left of Dragon Scales, it's Cure. Bottom right... Hero. Music. Just, I love this track. It's a good one. We're just going to listen to it for a minute as Terran's doing his thing. Ah, gorgeous. No proxies here from Cure. Reaper hop-up spot must be blocked by Hero in this game, so no proxies from him either. Probe on the way out for the scout. Afro Jack enjoyed that last game. What's up, Afro Jack? I'm glad you did. And all's looking good. Again, pretty darn standard PVT here for game number two. I say this every time, but this probe harassment of this SEV is eternal. This is something we see in Brood War and have seen in Brood War since like 1998. How many of you people were alive in 1998? Probably a bunch of ya. Yeah. But seriously, it is the longest running thing. Probe harassment of the SEV building a barracks dates back ancient to ancient, ancient times. Hero taking a second base after Cyber Core. Pretty safe to do it that way against a Terran opponent. One Rax expanding. SCV says you are expanding. Again, great information. That's all he wants. All the information that he needs is there's a Nexus coming up here. Which would be funny if Hero canceled it, threw down like four gates, and just went for a one base four gate attack. And Cure's like, wait, you were expanding. And Hero's like, bah, ha, ha, ha. I have fooled you. Here we go. Factory, second gas, second base coming up. Bunker. This is all, this has all been done before. This will all be done again for Cure.
That's right, Nexus. You keep warping. You warping real, real good. Gonna swap this reactor onto the factory, I assume, or just use this for a couple marines. Again, it's another Hellion. I just... It's anti-adept harassment, but in game one, Hero just wasn't really interested in doing that. He's keeping the adept at home. So I guess maybe the fact that Cure is preventing it means it doesn't happen, so it looks like it's not necessary when it is. Blinks on the way. Again, it was just kind of a macro win there from Hero in game number one. I don't think that he did anything in particular smart. Other than get the third base down, saturate it fast, use the resources to make a ton of stalkers, sentry zealots, and a couple of mortals. And get that win. Yeah, he doesn't want the Widow Mind to fire on that hallucinated phoenix. Can't blame him for it either. Oh, hang on. It doesn't work if there are stalkers and sentries involved. Run! Ah, Reaper wiped out. Hellion running for his life. Should be able to escape. Okay, Marines, Marines, Marines. Siege tank. Another barrack. Starport coming in. Third base warping in from Hero at four minutes. This is just... Okay, Hellion could have run. Kind of chose not to and died. This is just Hero being like, look, if you're going to sit back and do this Widow Mine stuff... I'm going to be ready for it with my Blink Stalkers. And I'm getting it a third base while you're fiddling around with trying to Widow Mine drop me. I'm going to take very little damage. I'm going to be on three bases. I'm going to get, you know, an army bigger than yours, and I'm just going to come kill you. Forge Gateway from Hero. Again, where's the third base? Where's the beef, man? You're just letting Hero toss up a third base while you're not even considering it right now. Observer says, thank goodness no third base. No third CC under construction of the production tab. Nothing visible anywhere. Going for plus one. Marauders in production. Stim coming in. More and more Marines being added and a Raven, but... I need to move out now to punish this third base, but he needs to wait. He's got to wait for combat shield. He's got to wait for stim. He went for a widow mine drop that maybe two probes died. Maybe just not getting enough damage whatsoever. I mean, in fairness, nothing has died here from cure either, except for that Reaper Hellion setup, which wasn't a big deal. All right, War Prism up. Zealots loaded in. Let's go, boys. Zoom, 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 but guess what? We're just going to distract him by a ton of zealots warping into the main base, forcing the army to come back and deal with it, and buying Hero more time to use his better economy to get a bigger army. This is exactly what he did last time. This time, Cure left some dudes at home, so it's not as much of a mess, and he doesn't have to bring these guys home at all, so maybe Cure has figured this out a little bit. Ah, siege tank up. Force fields keeping this army out. Do you want to load up when there are this many stalkers? Not really. No. Forcing them around another way. Warp Prism is here. Might try to warp in some zealots. Again, get a bit of a sandwich on this army from Cure. All right. Immortal down. Oh, that immortal being left alone totally sucks. Zealots did try to go for that sandwich. High ground advantage, big deal. Anti-armor missile catches a couple of zealots and an immortal. Ah, is there enough to take down? Ah, Twilight Council dies. 
depowers both of these warp gates. Uh, Hero trying to stand in and fight Immortal, getting some nice shots off, fighting with the anti-armor missile. He doesn't really have a choice about it. Zealot's counterattack on the other side have killed a bunch of SCVs. The natural base of Cure is on fire. And this, oh boy, this little army is enough. It's 63 to 31 army supply. He has to warp home the Zealots from the natural base to try to save his bacon right now. The extra income of Hero is helping a lot. That third base is helping immensely here. Cure's natural base is a ghost town. Did he lose that orbital? Tell me he didn't lose that orbital. It would seem he lost the orbital considering he's sending the orbital over that way. Oh no! Losing a medevac on the retreat there. Hero stabilizes. He held on to the third base. He held on to the natural base. He lost some probes. 28 probes have died. Only four SEVs died, which means Cure has technically a worker advantage, and mules are pretty good too. But there's nothing. There we go. Prennet finally bringing some SCVs up to resaturate that natural base. But Cure says, well, that was your third orbital, isn't it? And you have to repurpose it as your natural, so hey. Game pause. Oh, looks like we got a pause real quick. I don't know if Hero. Uh. I don't know. Hero said something. Cure said something as well. Somebody in chat might be able to translate for us. <laughs> uh, guys, what are we doing here? Uh, where is my Google Translate? My phone is not here. I cannot use it for translation purposes. Are we back? Uh, they're chitter-chattering about something. Hero said that a food delivery has arrived. <laughs> oh! Three, two, one, we're back. Okay, good. Fine. That's hilarious. He's ordering food in the middle of a best of seven? That's incredible stuff. <laughs> All right. Uh, brrr, heading on down here is a Cure. Got a ton of Marauders. Very Marauder-heavy composition here. But I do pretty good against Stalkers, it turns out. Colossus, too. I don't know how I feel about Colossus. Yeah, only one Colossus. Guardian Shield is up. Zealots getting obliterated. The kiting. Oh, more Zealots on the backside here. 65 to 61 army supply. Cure is up. Marauders coming on a flank. Take out a couple sentries, but then. Ah, that's a GG. And Hero takes a two. 2-1 victory here. Beautiful defense, man. Fantastic defense. And yeah, he's just getting that third base up way, way ahead of Cure. What was really bad is that Cure lost his orbital to that Zealot attack while both players were being attacked at the same time. Uh, that was bad. Losing it was huge. He had to take that base that was going to be his third, make it his natural, and then he was toast. Like, economically, that was not going to work out for him. Resource collection rate, yeah, just largely favoring Hero over the last three minutes of the game, which you can't see, but now you can see this. See how the income goes whoop for Hero, then it's like higher, 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 ah. It's gone now, but you saw it. You know what's up. GLHF, both of you guys, I believe in you. And let's move into Royal Blood for game number three. This is kind of a do or die for Cure. Going down 3-0 to Hero is going to be almost an insurmountable task to defeat him. But not impossible. I don't know, man. It's just it feels a lot better when you can be down 2-1 uh, instead of 2-0 or 3-0, right? Cure bottom left of Royal Blood, Hero top right of Royal Blood. This SCV is probably up to no good. Just based on the time he moved out and based on the trajectory of how he's moving here. Alright, it's got to be a barracks because, well, the timing says barracks. 
Is he going to try to get a Reaper up here before this is fully walled off? That seems weird if that's what he's doing. How's the sound balance? Is the music and sound effects loud enough compared to my voice, or could it be bumped up a little bit? I feel like based on what I'm seeing in my OBS, it feels like it could be bumped up a little bit. But if it sounds good to you guys, I'll just leave it alone. And again, use the Matcharino code. Uh, Key is giving you the link. You gotta copy paste it. You can't click on it, but that's okay. I forget, again, fun about links. Yeah, it can't be a Reaper because this is walled off before the barracks can even complete. Well, he's making a Reaper anyway. I mean, this is hard walled. So I guess you just have to go around and up here and you get here before the Adept shows up and the Stalker shows up and you get a couple kills and everything's good. All right, well, let's see how... Oh, and he's trying to throw up a bunker. <laughs> so Reaper says, zoom, jetpack activated. Let's get inside. Let's save. Yeah. No. no. He does kill the probe harassing. That bunker looks like it's going to finish. Reaper says, yeah, you want to fight me? You want to fight me, guys? Go ahead. You will never kill me. Not in a billion, million years. I'm not like Zerglings. You can kill Zerglings. But Reapers, man, invincible against probes. Bunker finishes. Reaper's job right now is to get inside that bunker without dying. And does. SCV dies, which totally sucks. And there's a shield battery here. Oh, hang on. Two Reapers. A little bit interesting. He's trying to take down the shield battery. Because, you know, killing the Stalker a little bit useless if the shield battery still exists. All right, never mind. We're getting out. We're salvaging. We're running. It was cute. It was a cute early attempt here, but did not go particularly well for Cure. I mean, what did he kill? He killed two probes. And uh, that's it. So he's floating the barracks back home. He's trying to... Did he try to KDA charge himself over that but missed horribly? I think that's what happened for Cure. Second base from Cure coming in. Hero second base is already done, which is... Kind of been the story of the series so far as Hero's economy and base count being heavier than Cure's here. And look, mules are a thing. I get it, right? You're going to want to be kind of a base up on the Terran anyway, because even if you're on, you know, a base up on the Terran player as a Protoss, mules are going to even that out a little bit. Widow Mines kind of set up in defensive positions right now as this medevac starts being made out of the starport. We got a barracks coming up from Cure. And Phoenix as the answer to this from Hero. Really not a bad answer to Widow Mines. Because he can lift them and make them completely impotent. And they die pretty fast to Phoenix attacks as well. I mean, they die pretty fast from attacks from anything because Widow Mines are squishy. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I've seen Phoenix be the answer to Widowmine drops way more effectively than almost anything else. Yeah, lift, lift. You can take the time to kill the Widowmines, and then you can chase down the Medevac and just absolutely crush. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, so uh, three Widowmines and a Medevac died for nothing. Nothing died for the Protoss at all. Somicron. Thanks for clicking the claim code button, giving the players that free 25 cents. What's up, Sami? Welcome to this best of seven finals, where Cure's in a lot of trouble. All right, tank lift for a second. Then Marines and Cyclones are like, no, how about not? The depths getting behind this mineral line are annoying, but Siege Tank again. Kind of the answer here. <laughs> Woo! Five SCVs down. It's officially 46 to 35 workers in favor of Hero. Phoenix count heavy and third base warping in. Let's see, Cure, is he getting a third base once again? No.
Come on, Cure. You can't lose another game because the Protoss got a third base on you way early and you didn't. This is, uh, wow, five more SCVs die. It's 48 to 34 workers. Hero's advantage and in income is massive right now. Plus that third base keeps warping in. Man, Hero is definitely Gosu. Agreed. Another SCV dies. Dude, that's a total of 10 SCVs killed in the first six minutes of the game. Not looking great. Keep waiting for a third CC to be built. Once again, Cure says, I need combat shield. I need stim before it can go. He gets him a little bit earlier today. Last time, Hero's third base was rolling before that upgrade finished. Oh, Phoenix trying to get that Raven. They do in exchange for a couple Phoenix. Another one dies. That lock on distance was insane out of Cure. Wow. So it is 40 to 28 army supply. Cure, two base in it. Combat shield, stim, medevacs, marines, marauders, siege tanks, a reaper. Oh, Cure, you can't go home, man. Every second you spend not walking across the map is a second that you are in trouble economically. Okay, he's moving. He's moving out. Dude, it's 15 more workers for Hero. Yeah, look at that. Look at this income. Whee! He recalls in to deal with a little, I mean, a four marine drop. Nothing crazy, I guess. And the Phoenix are just going to burn down this medevac before it could unload. Yeah. Cure dashing into the third base. Does depower the shield battery. Probe's got to get pulled out. Not looking good. All right. Cure in a position to win this game a little bit better than he has been. Pretty much all series so far. Chasing these probes. Probes don't have the ability to run very fast. Especially compared to stimmed marines and marauders. So, dude, he just got... Okay, 17 probes killed. Amazing stuff. Colossus count. Extended Thermal Lance just completing. And I don't know if Cure can manage to retreat here. Does that Was that what he wants to do? Running away, just kind of get picked apart. I still am waiting for a third base for him. I do not see it. And yeah, sure you killed some probes, but guess who's got Chrono Boost? Hero. Hero has the Chrono Boost ability. <gasps> there it is. Third CC. 830 from Cure. Seems late. Seems extremely late. Sixty-two to fifty-nine army supply. Cure still down in worker count. Widow mines, yeah, firing a little more than friendly fire splash, more than anything else. Taking out a phoenix, though, that was a decent hit on that widow mine before he gets burned out of the ground. Kafa whoosh, and this is beautiful from Cure. Stimming up your shield battery will not save you now. Shield battery overcharge up. They get the pylon, depowering the shield battery again. Look at this positioning by these Marines. That's crazy. Finally, the Phoenix have to lift them to allow Zealots in a position where they can actually kill them. That was amazing. But 12 more probes die, and Cure's actually up in worker count now. Income tab. Bam. Back down in the red, just like that. Oh, what is that button? I don't know. Two? Oh, two. I never knew about two. Look at me learning stuff. I've been casting StarCraft for seven years now, and I'm learning stuff. Eight years now. Is it eight years now? I feel like it's eight years now. All right. So Cure is in the best position he's been in all series, right? He's got his third base rolling. He's killed enough probes for Hero's third base that it hasn't been as much of an advantage for Hero as he wanted it to be. The income is favoring Hero right now, but that Viking count to deal with the Colossus is exactly what he wants. Helps with the Phoenix, too. It's going to come down to some amazing disruptor shots if Hero's going to win this game. Zealots! Ah, Cure leaving dudes at home. That's right. You leave those dudes at home. And Hero taking a fourth base down the right side. Cyclone is fast, but charge lots faster. Faster. 
A little bit of a Zell attack inside the main base of Cure. Shoves that away. Ghosts have been added to the comp. Love it. Always love to see ghosts. And uh, here's a big old drop. Cure into the main base of Hero. E oh, man. Is he going to deny Blink? He can. He can deny Blink if he wants to. Oh, well. He's depowered the Twilight. So that kind of works. Vikings kiting these Colossus. Trying to take him down. Disruptor shots not doing much, but it does force Cure out of here. Repowering this Twilight needs to be a priority. Blink is a huge upgrade. You cannot really be without here at 11 minutes as a Protoss. Widow Mine. Ah, hits a Disruptor, and then it gets wiped out by the follow up attacks there from Cure. So, Cure, three base in it. Cancels the fourth base of Hero because he was down this way. Kind of coincidentally, really. Colossus count. Not as healthy as it was. There are two. There used to be three. And, oh boy. So all these dudes die, but a drop does... Oh, never mind. There are stalkers ready for it. So both players doing a pretty good job keeping just small groups of army units inside their bases so that small attacks from the enemy don't get anything done. It's very good. But man, three base to three base. Cure's got a big income advantage here. Mules are helping a lot. We are ships passing in the night. Cure heading north. Hero hitting south. And neither of them will be in a much of a position to do anything. The thing is, Hero can recall. So here goes into the natural base of Cure. Cure into the third base of Hero. Yeah, probes dying all over the place. Uh-oh, Cure's third base under attack as well. Disruptors coming up this ramp. Not being particularly microed well. You just kind of A move them up that ramp. Not great. Missile turret getting shots off on. A Colossus is hilarious. We're in full base race mode right now, dude. Look at this. Both players pulling workers out and meeting on the left side. That's amazing. Natural Nexus dead. Second base for Cure lifted. Main base of Cure. All his production lives here. 40 SCVs have died, 28 probes have died, and into the main base. This is so important for Cure. He needs to win this game. Being down 3-0 and a best of seven against Hero is death. Can he do it? Can he win this base race? They say never base race a Terran. Are there any flying units available for the Protoss? No. So if these buildings are floating and they go to the corners, that's a massive advantage the Terran player will have. I just... That boy. Nobody has any income whatsoever. Yep, see the income went to zero for both players. But the ability to float buildings will buy time. Uh, Cure building a command center over here on the left side. Hero taking the third base of Cures as his own with a Nexus. Army value 65 to 65. But Cure has 20 SEVs to 5 probes. Dude. Cure. He has the ability to actually get income at a lot higher rate. Look at Cure floating his buildings over here. He knows. He knows Hero doesn't have any flying units. He lost all of his Phoenix. He can't. He can't. He can't kill those flying buildings unless he retext back up to Stargate. Which is going to take him a minute because he doesn't have any gateways. <laughs> He's completely back to square one. Guess is why they say don't base race a Terran. Because look, all this tech is here. Barracks, factory, starport exists. Shield battery count is heavy. Dude, who wins in this battle? Oh, stalkers see these buildings. And Hero heads over to try to shut them down. But guess who's swinging up this right side? Cure is. Hero says, oh, never mind. Hang on. Hang on. Got to defend my remaining buildings. And, oh boy, an EMP caught. Shield battery. Going to regen that shield very, very nicely. Cure setting up. Pre-splits. Cure. Okay, floating the buildings up. This stalker's chasing. This stalker's chasing. Going for it. Shield battery overcharge pops. Disruptor shots would be huge. How many disruptors are there? Just the one. Shield batteries picked off from distance. SCVs body blocking as well as they can. Shield battery overcharge, not a thing anymore. And Colossus, can they get enough swipes here? Double Colossus. Kiting as well as they can. Stalkers fighting Colossus dead. What is left down here? A ghost, a marauder. 
Cure's got to back it out. It's 18 to 20 army supply. Medivax getting picked off. A lot of that army supply for Cure is Medivax, though. Which doesn't help him if he doesn't have any actually attacking units. He's got a Marauder and a Ghost. And a Widow Mine. Which, again, sounds like a joke of some kind. A Marauder, a Ghost, and a Widow Mine walk into a bar. Cure's last remaining orbitals on fire. Cure landing his uh, production facilities and tech structures here. He's got some cash. He can make some stuff. So he's making a Marauder. This is insane. This is a fantastic, fantastic game here. And again, Cure fighting for his life right now. He just... Oh, I don't know. Every bit of damage you're taking from this Colossus is bad news. Hero has two probes with which he's mining. Cure has no income. Cure has not rebuilt his base. He's being revealed. It's 18 to 14 army supply, but when for a GG, Cure taps out. Oh, what a heartbreaking loss. What an absolutely heartbreaking loss for Cure and every Terran fan who's watching this. John Solo says, that was beautiful. A Korean person says, nice game. It was. It really was a nice game. Oh. All right, Rinda Gresfin. Man, Hero was this close. Hero was this close. That assault on that base was everything. It was everything. If he'd gotten that taken care of, if he had taken that fight, he wins it. And he's down 2-1 instead of being down 3-0. Against Hero, probably the best Protoss player on Earth. Phoenix enjoyed that game. John Solo enjoyed that game. Brock, your... What a match, though. That was awesome. That was incredibly awesome. Alright, here we go. We're on Gresfin. Good map for Macro Games. Bottom right, it's Cure. Down 3-0. Top left, it's Hero. Up. 3-0. Well, does Cure take some massive chances here? Can you reverse sweep hero, Cure? Are you capable? Phoenix is cheering for it. It's a tall, tall order. Actually, I'm going to pull up a Ligulac real fast. Come on, Oligulac. Don't lag out on me. You got this. You got this. Okay, so number one. Serral, Morrow, Dark, Cure, Clem, Hero. <gasps> Cure's ranked higher than Hero on Oligulac right now. But Hero is the highest ranked Protoss player on Oligulac. Max Pax is 10 currently. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you an all right. Phoenix is like, if you don't use nukes, you deserve to lose. Or he's like, this is what happens. <laughs> John Solo doesn't appreciate those words. But yeah, nukes are fun. I mean, look, Cure's down 3-0. He might as well try to get some nukes off here. Right? Not blocking the Reaper hop-up spot this time as Hero. That's interesting. It's right here. It is highlighted for you. The map makers do that these days. SCV says, well, let's make sure I don't die to anything stupid. So, ah, okay. You do have a second base. Again, that's really all Cure is interested in finding out. Is, do you have a second base? And then he just sends the SCV home. Reaper... On the follow, Adept on the way. And everything is looking fine. Very, very standard stuff on both sides of the map. Reaper recognizes there's an Adept out here somewhere, so there's really no use going inside the main base. So might as well use my guns to weaken this Nexus for future attacks.
Run, Reaper! Escape! Escape! Zealot shows up. Where are the? He walked way across the map for this. Wow. Nice bunker to fall back to. Always good. All right. Recalling the zealot home. Hilarious. Good job, man. Way to get zero kills. You're fantastic. Adept. Nope. You lift the door. The adept doesn't get in. Oh, look. Look, you guys. The hellion is getting use. We have not seen the hellion really get used today. Cure's been making them. And... Oh, adept gets out of there with not a lot of HP. By that I mean... I don't know where the Adept went, but it doesn't have a lot of HP. Here you are. 19 hit points and some shields regenerating now. Little puppy. What's up, puppers? Ruff, ruff. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Blink on the way from here a bit earlier than the last game when it got paused temporarily. Cure says more Widowmind drops. Has he really gotten a lot done with it against Hero? No. I don't know if, how good I feel about it. Oh, Reaper. Reaper just deep into Protoss territory. Kills nothing, dies. But hey, did scout the Twilight Council, working on something. So probably Blink. If you had to guess, you make an educated guess as a Terran against a Protoss. When it's Hero, it's probably Blink. Any Protoss, really, it's probably Blink. Another Raven from Cure. More tank production. Another Barracks. And once again, he's delaying the upgrades. He's delaying the combat shield and the stim. Trying to get Ravens out more quickly. Trying to get Widow Mine drops off, you know? Once again. And once the Medivac dies, that's it. Two probes will die, but a Medivac down and two Widow Mines down is awesome. Hellion trying to bust into this natural base, get some kills, gets shut down. So, uh, three probes down for a Medivac, two Widow Mines, a Reaper, and a Hellion. 600 150 resources lost. Not a great opening if you're Cure. And he just keeps going for it. Just If you're going for Widowmine drops every single game, Hero knows what you're doing. And he can prepare for it. And he shuts it down like he's done. Pretty much four games in a row now. Army value is 26 to 25 in favor of Hero. Not a massive advantage. All right, Siege Tank gets jumped on, target fired, but Marine Marauder count a little bit hefty. Bunker to fall back here, too, is nice. Stalker's just target firing individual SCVs. He gets four SCVs. And then is rebuffed by the Marines, the Marauders, the Raven here if necessary. Hero making Colossus behind this. Oh, and then blinking into the main base. The army, oh, a little bit late on the response, and just picking off SCVs. That's it. No real huge plans for Hero here. Just picking off SCVs, and then blinking down, getting out of there. See, he's getting SCV kills without losing anything. That's the difference between what Cure has been doing today. Cure is trying to get probe kills, but he's losing everything in the process. Sure, Hero lost a couple things here and there, a couple stalkers, but... Oh, this is great, great, great micro. Guess, guess what? Another third base from Hero coming up on that left side. Here we go. Combat shield finishing. Stim finishing. Cure kind of stuck in a rut. I'm just sort of doing the same thing every game. And that's just not going to cut it against the best Protoss player on Earth. Even if you happen to be higher ranked than the best Protoss player on Earth right now. In a time when Terrans are doing pretty well for themselves in 2023. I'm not going to go so far as to say it's a patch Terran thing because I don't know what it is. Has anybody really explained why Terrans are doing so well in 2023 after this latest patch? What is it? They nerfed ghosts. Kind of. Like, what? what is it? I don't understand. Yeah, really sick micro from Hero. But what do we expect from this guy? Best Protoss player in the world right now. Third base scan, single shield battery up, two Colossus out, not the three that you want. Ready for a blink dodge? Sick blink dodge. <laughs> hmm. Third Colossus almost out. Interference matrix on one of the Colossus. 
Nice force fields there, though. And another blink dodge. Colossus. Nice. Very, very nice. Ah, Fubika says the map pool is great for Terrans. That's why Terrans have been doing so well in this current year, 2023. Fair enough. Fair, fair enough. Although Hero is making it look like Protoss should be doing better in premier tournaments than they are, huh? Kira's got two separate armies, one at the north, one in the mid lane here. Hero's aware of that. He's kind of trying to defend against both right now. Man, triple Colossus. Again, it's just sort of the answer. He's trying to boost into the main. Is there really anything to stop this from happening? There's a Dark Shrine on the way from Hero. Man, this warp in. Imagine being able to be like, oh, oh, I didn't quite have the units available to deal with this drop. Bam, two second warp in, eight stalkers show up. That's so good. That is so powerful. I wish I could do that as a Zerg player, but uh, even for as fast as Zerglings warp in, or warp in, as fast as they hatch, not really enough. Oh, Zealots are back in Cure's main base. Causing a full evac of SCVs from this position. Colossus. Beautiful micro here. Viking count not really enough to get rid of these Colossus. Not all that much. Widowmind count surprisingly heavy. Are we still... Alright, so Zealots get cleaned out. A lot of army is required to deal with that, though. Disruptor shot. Huge disruptor shot there. Massive disruptor shot there. Third base. Uh-uh. Not happening. 83 to 62 army supply. Cure has a bigger army, but uh, worker count 63 to 60 in favor of Hero. This third base is a massive advantage for him. Hero getting a fourth base down this left side. And, oh, look. Oh, Cure, did he lift his orbital over here? Okay, okay. So he keeps the third. That's huge. That is huge for him that he kept that. Massive, actually. Stalkers, attack, blink, attack, blink. Pull back to shield batteries. Let's go. Did we play? Did we not replacing the Colossus we lost? We are. DT blinks on the way. Income was favoring Hero for a second there. Then it plummets right back down to about even. Both players kind of falling back to their ramps. But Hero does not respect Cure's ramp at all. He says, wait, shouldn't you have a base here or something? These Widow Mines just getting no value at all. <laughs> what a surprising amount of debris for a Widow Mine that dies, you know? 85 to 95 army supply. Cure is bigger. SCV is getting pulled off the line to provide that body blocking. Hero's like, I really don't want anything to do with this. Going to warp prism some zealots into the main base and try to distract Cure enough that this army can actually push. Gosh, this is so annoying. And then just warps in another casual, you know, seven zealots. And then walks into a pretty sick concave from Cure. That's not how you want to be doing this. Disruptor shots, big disruptor shots. SCV's dying all over the place. And Hero stepping in, not stepping back. And that's how you know he feels like he's got control of this thing. Zealots taking out the Ghost Academy. GG Hero with the 4-0 victory in the finals. The best of seven finals here for Africa World 106. Congratulations to Hero getting the 4-0 win. Oh. I mean, Cure played hard. He played hard. He played fast. But I think Hero's economic advantage is what really caused the problems here today. Hero really focusing on getting that third base out fast. Getting that income ahead of the Terrans. Making up for the fact that there are mules. Just consistently being all over the place here. Wow. Crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah, Hero just making it look like Protoss should be winning every Premier Tournament in 2023, but they're not. You just got to play like Hero, I guess, in an Africa World offline tournament, man.
Heroes PVT is six, says John Solo. It's on point. It is. It really, really is. I don't even know. A cure could have tweaked a few things. I do think going for Widow Mine drops at the same time pretty much every game was a problem. They never really got much done. Right? And Hero was ready for them every time. Maybe losing a couple probes here and there to every Widow Mine drop. Always getting the medevac. Always killing the Widow, widow Mines. And that just set Cure back every time. Again, he was going for faster Widow Mine drops, which delayed his ability to get a third. It delayed his ability to get a combat shield stim timing attack with Marines, Marauders, Widow Mines, Medevacs. It just allowed Hero the time to get out either a ton of Stalkers, get into Colossus, Disruptors, whatever he wanted to. And then he really, really excellently used the Warp Prisms and Zealot Drops to just completely crush Cure's base there too inside the main. So that shows Hero, man. Hero going 4-0 today, taking down a very, very good Cure. Cure's having a good year. Again, he's ranked higher than Hero in Oligulac. But that, you know, Oligulac's not everything. Hero just had Cure's number today. Got that win. And that's, I mean, it was a 4-0. But I think all four of those games are pretty interesting and entertaining in their own way. Hey, John Solo, thanks. And yeah, know your opponent, says John Solo. Thanks, Aki, for helping to keep it down there in chat. Linking the Macharino stuff. Thanks, everyone who donated to the Macharino with the claim code button and the 50 bucks there from phoenix of war 2 excellent excellent dono i'm sure the players are going to appreciate it and when we contact them again they'll be likely to come back so that was a solo cast a falcon paladin solo cast at africa world 106 hope laughing games gets better soon never fun to be sick especially when you're a caster and yeah, thanks everybody. I love you all. Love StarCraft. We'll be back in a couple weeks probably with another Afrika World. Follow me on Twitter at Falcon Paladin. Follow Laughing Games as well at Laughing Games. You've seen it before. You know what his Twitter handle is. We will let you know when the next one is and who it is. So follow us out there. And yeah, until two weeks. Thanks so much for being here. And until next time, y'all take care of yourselves. And goodbye. Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II a Legacy of the Void. Today, it's going to be an Archon Mode match that was submitted to me through my Discord server. It's going to be a Clem and a teammate of his versus an EU GM player and a partner of theirs as well. So here we are on Glittering Ashes. Top right, we have our Protoss team. It's going to be a Teemo and ABT. And in the bottom left, we have a Blue Terran. It's going to be Clem and Ugly. So, hmm, I've been casting Archon mode for a few years now because I just kind of feel like it's basically a normal game. So, let's see if this is going to be anything different. Hmm. And again, this is a European GM player. At least one of these players is EU GM. So, it should give Clem a fight. But we will have to wait and see. <sighs> Imba race, says Timo. <laughs> what are you Imbaing? I mean, jokes, obviously. I want to say that's jokes there. But gateway expand on the low ground here from ABT, interestingly enough. High ground walling off a little bit here is Clem. Not scouting himself. Oh, man, it's going to be hard for me not to just call this Clem, isn't it? So Team Terran with Clem representing. That's the reason we clicked on this. Clem is not allowed to touch the keyboard, says ABT. <laughs> Yeehaw, says Ugly. <laughs> so if you haven't seen an Archon mode game yet, both players have complete control over everything. So they can select a unit, do stuff with it. They can be in control. I mean, they can do anything. You can play this Archon mode where Clem just does literally all the things of the game and the other person sits back and hangs out. I don't even know. I guess combined APM is what we're looking at here, but whatever. APM is a dumb metric for Archon anyway. Yeah, it's. I kind of feel like it might be a little bit better if one person is in charge of macro and one person is in charge of kind of like micro and battles and stuff. You don't have to go back home, like, or even hotkey back home to make another round of units in the midst of a battle, you know? You can just kind of focus on the macro entirely. 
But we'll see. We'll see what we get here. Like I said, I've cast a bunch of Archon mode games when they first came out years ago, and I just... I watched them, and there was nothing like, wow, this is the biggest... This is the best example of macro I've ever seen, or I can't believe the macro this team is pulling off because one person is focusing on macro or whatever, you know? It's like we, it feels like you kind of have the same thing going. Anyway, there's an Adept on the way here for Team Protoss because, I mean, Reapers are fairly common here in PvT, but we don't have one today. So it's going to be a little Marine Marauder play. Are we moving out with you boys? Is that what we're doing? Oh, we're just here to defend against the incoming Adept. Oh, the Adept! Oh, and there's Marauder Slow! Oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts so much. Oh, it doesn't even get the Marine. Are we surprised by this? No. We're not. Oh, what an absolutely disgusting opening here. Concussive Shell Marauder opening to catch the Adept and kill it. And early on, that's such a major advantage. Because now there's no vision out on the map for Team Protoss whatsoever. They're cowering inside their base in fear. Making a shield battery because they know there's a Marauder coming across the map. One of them at least, maybe two? Oh yeah. Two Marauders, two Heavies here with a Marine behind them. Because if the Marine gets hit, once again, it's going to die. A Void Ray is coming out too to try to defend against this. Are we Chrono Boosting that sucker? Yeah, we're Chrono Boosting that Void Ray. But this is the current patch, so Void Rays build a little bit slower than they used to. The Marine gets sniped. Now the Adept with the Shield Battery can kind of hold their own here. They don't do bonus damage versus Marauders or anything, but damage is still damage. It's like math is math from Mr. Incredible, Incredibles 2. Damage is damage. But yeah, once the Void Ray shows up, that's going to be it. So a nice little, okay, proper preparation there for Team Protoss of the aggressiveness of those Marauders with a Concussive Shell. Shield Battery is still an incredibly good unit. Uh, forward Shield Batteries do come up with only half the energy that regular shield batteries do, which is full energy. So a defensive shield battery still has the advantage. Nothing's been nerfed there. On the other side, let's see. Widow Mines, when they have Drilling Claws, they burrow a little bit more slowly than they did with the Drilling Claws upgrade. So, hmm. We'll see if that moves the needle or not. Third base here from the Protoss. I like it! I like getting a third base, and he's like, how many Marines do you have? Oh, it's enough Marines to handle a single Void Ray, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, just no, 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 no. No, 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 Marine count is heavy. They were maybe hoping that the Terran team here would go for a lot of Marauders and then the Voidry would kill them all, but nope. This is Clem we're talking about. He's not that dumb. Voidrays in this patch? You crazy, says Ugly. <laughs> they're still as fast. They're still as fast. They still have good acceleration and top speed, and they're still hard to chase down and pick off. Hello, I saw Marauders, okay? So obviously... Oh, the Tech Lab goes down! Oh, but the Voidray dies too. Ah, it was Combat Shield getting researched, and now it's not happening. So, yeah, we've got Stim, and we've got Concussive Shell, but Combat Shield is Toast. Little, I like this. Little Sky tossing it here. We saw Classic do this in GSL last week. It was kind of incredible. He went for Carrier. Like, one of the games he went Carrier Colossus. He was making Void Rays and Carriers and, I mean, Oracles. Obviously, that's not too weird. But Phoenix, too. Like, Phoenix are picking off drops all over the place for Classic. It was kind of amazing. It was him against Dream, I want to say, in the GSL, but really fun stuff. If you want to find those VODs, they're available on YouTube on the ESL channel. So, we don't have any medevacs here. This is an interesting timing. About a, It's a sub-six-minute attack. With a bunch of, I mean, already stimmed up Marines and Marauders, but like, I don't know. The Phoenix are lifting and killing Marines. They're doing all right. Shield Battery Overcharge is fine. That's a weird attack from Team Clem there. Like, you're going to show up without any medevac support at all and no combat shield either. I don't think that was a good trade whatsoever. So if we're looking at the resources lost, it's 900 to 1200. Terran has lost more. Clem has lost more resources here. Maybe we'll blame Ugly for that attack. Clem's just back home macroing. He's like listening to music. Whistling to himself, la, 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 la. I'm making a lot of stuff, I'm expanding, getting a ton of SCVs, and you do this other stuff. Ugly, you do the battles, and I'll just be back here having fun. Yeah, Phoenix picking off an SCV there. He's like, hey, Clem says. Why didn't you have an army in position to protect my third base? And then fights begin. Somerkin and I used to do, we used to Archon Ladder, because there's an Archon Ladder. I, I mean, it was bad a couple years ago. I can't imagine there's any more people doing it now, but... Well, Widow Mines are out. Uh, but, yeah. I mean, it's just... It It creates a, some annoyance, for sure, because if something bad happens, 
You have a tendency to not blame yourself, because, right, we're all selfish creatures at our hearts. But what we want to do is blame our teammate, man. So in an Archon mode match, it's easier to do. Yeah, unload them, Widow Mines. That medevac is dead. And, oh, lifts and kills both of the Widow Mines. Are we sure this is Clem? I'm going to tell you, this is Clem. It showed on the unloading screen, Liquid Clem's name. And the APM pretty high. Again, it's combined APM, though. Either way, I don't know. Are we convinced? Are we convinced this is Clem? If this was a 1v1 game, I would not be convinced this is Clem. But the fact that it's an Archon mode just kind of brings a level of weirdness into it. So yeah, Fleet Beacon on the way. Are we going to see those carriers? I don't know if carriers are the new meta for PVT or what. Nice snipe on the SCV building the missile turret. See, this is the kind of stuff a lower level player can do when they're in an Archon game, right? Like, the pros do this all the time. They're sharking around with things like Phoenix. They're sharking around ah, with Mutalisks and stuff, and they're macroing their faces off back home. But a lower level Diamond, Platinum level player is going to have a hard time with that, right? So in Archon mode, it gives you the freedom to just do this. I mean, picking up a Marauder and killing it. Big drop coming into the main base, though. And yeah, unloading enough that Phoenix needs to get out of there. First carrier in production. There's a Colossus out with extended thermal lance as well. And depowering the Stargate takes it down. Depowers. Ooh, the shield battery too. Trying to kill that Colossus, but oh, they get it. They get the Colossus, but two more join the party. And the Marauders are trying to do huge amounts of damage to the Immortals, especially, but they just get burned apart by the fire lasers there. On the other side, there's. Ooh, probes running the, from the third base under attack. Simultaneous attacks coming in here. So that feels a little bit more Clem-like that we're getting that. There's a four-basing Protoss to a three-basing Terran. Mules are good. So having a worker advantage as a Terran plus your mules is pretty amazing. So this supposed Clem player and his teammate Ugly are doing really well economically. I'll tell you that much. Ghost Academy coming in because you do need some ghosts. It's a GM level Terran player, or rather, Clem is playing this, who's beyond a GM level. He is ranked among the elite Terran players on the earth right now. So, yeah. Definitely going to get some ghosts against these carriers, which. It's just weird, right? How often do we see carriers versus Terran? It's just because Marines are incredibly good against carriers. They murder interceptors in a snap, they murder carrier bodies in a snap if they can get there. There's Vikings available. Vikings just absolutely were designed to kill things like carriers. I just... I don't know. I just don't know how I feel about this whole thing. It, I guess it can work, especially if you have Colossus to deal with the Marines. That's the idea behind this, right? Is that to go Colossus to deal with the Marines, and when the Marines are gone, then the carriers can have a pretty good time. Mothership on the way, too. Why not? Why not make a mothership? You're making carriers... <laughs> Right, you're getting shield upgrades, plus two air weapons here too. Clem is sitting on, uh, working on plus two, plus two for his marines and his marauders, doing very traditional Terran-y things. Not going to bother with liberators, because again, the carriers kind of counter those pretty effectively. So, no liberators, but six vikings are out, 33 marines, 12 marauders, some ghosts are up, some widow mines. Widow mines also very good against interceptors, as we've seen in the past, when Protoss tried to go carriers versus a Terran player. So very old, very old match. Disruptors coming in here too. Recognizing we need a little bit more splash damage. Need a bit more splash damage here. So lifted Viking getting killed by Phoenix. How often do you ever see that? The answer is not often at all. What a weird, weird thing. So kill the Viking, there you go. And just get out of there, we're good. Single Marine trying to deny a fifth base. Brought lasered to death by the War of the World Walkers. Fusion Core coming in. Oh, we are making Liberators. How dare you tell me how to play the game, Clem says. Falcon, I can make whatever I want and win, and that's true. You probably can. And Hatch Shockwave is coming in here, too, working on air weapons. The Fleet Beacon's probably not for battle cruisers. It's traditionally going to be for advanced ballistics. So here we go. Interceptor count. 18. Not ideal. Disruptor is sending some things out there, but not really connecting at all. It's kind of more of a zoning play, pushing the Terran army back than really trying to get a big hit off in this situation. So how nervous would you be if you randomed into Clem on ladder? 
I'd be pretty nervous. I'd be dead by now, but also pretty nervous. Yeah, look at these interceptors. Every time a big fell soup of interceptors shows up, they just get obliterated to absolute pieces here. Chasing down, chasing down. Disruptor comes in, gotta back it out. Killing disruptors is pretty good stuff too. EMPs it so it dies faster. And oh my gosh, another carrier's gonna die. There's so many Viking. Bruh. Dude, EMP gets tossed down on everything. Again, splitting. Yeah, this is some pretty high level Terran stuff. I gotta say, at this stage it is. The splits against these disruptor novas have been sick. Okay, that was another insane one. I think a Marauder died there, but army value is 113 to 92 in favor of the Terran. Kind of standing and fighting right now. Interceptor count is four. This is what I'm talking about. Oh, the mothership gets focused by the Marines and the Vikings mothership dies. Disruptors keeping us alive for the time being here for Team Protoss. Expanding again during all this chaos as well. Liberators showing up, setting up in decent position to deny gas at this fourth base anyway. That's pretty good. Third base defended by all the carriers and only 30 interceptors in the world here. Okay, maybe sitting down to heal up a bit would be nice, but there are not that many. There's only four medevacs up, and these guys are empty. These two are running on empty. Where are the other medevacs, and how much energy do they have? Uh, they're over here. And there's another one. Okay, good. So that one can do some healing. If it's allowed to do some healing... Anywho, 193 to 175 supply. Team Clem is up. Forces cancel on this fifth base attempt. Because of course he does. This group heading off on an expedition up to the top left. Trying to see what they can do. Plus three air weapons on the way. Another mothership coming in. We're double downing. Double downing. Doubling down. Ooh, sniping those zealots is cool. Double downing. On the sky toss off. More carriers. Ten carriers. Three more on the way. We've only lost the one carrier so far. It's not like the carrier army got depleted. Finding individual pylons out. This base not happening. That's a cancel. Probe who tried to throw it up dies. Traditionally so. Disruptor. Two Marines die. I mean, that's some free damage. Purification Novas are free. They're free as locusts are, right? Oh, and standing in another carrier goes down. Carriers need to back out of here. I don't know if you want to be... Okay, they're hanging in. Interceptors not getting obliterated as much as they were before. There's still 40 of them here. Army value is 119 to 110. There you go. Pulling back a little bit. So all you're dealing with is a handful of interceptors here. Liberator getting some nice shots off there too. Disruptor connecting on nothing once again. And again, the splits are just godlike. Like as a Protoss, how do you feel when the splits are this godlike? Interceptor counts down to 13. And that's where you want to be. That's where you want to see the Protoss here. Expanding again is Clem. We've got some zealots that were, yeah, running into this third base, but there's a widow mine here and a disruptor set up, or a liberator set up, rather, to deny these style of attacks. Advanced Ballistics helps with that. 3-3 three, three is going to make this even harder for Team Protoss to win this game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, interceptor count is 51. So the good news is, Interceptors build quickly. The bad news is the Interceptors are not free. So another huge, fresh group of Marines. That plus three attack just finished. So I really feel like Interceptors are going to die even more quickly now because, of course, they are. Trying to focus down. Nice Nova hit. Trying to focus down this planetary. They do end up getting it. That's a big hit for sure. SCV is trying to make it out of the war zone here. And then also trying to focus down this replacement orbital. But so many Interceptors going down. There are only 20 remaining. 30 interceptors have died during this battle, and now the chase down, but the disruptors are being used to cover the retreat. Oh, a depth's down here at the third base, not inside the circle. The circle was covering quite nicely until the liberators. The liberator circle was not covering the adept range. They were planning on zealots here. Liberators setting up to try to kind of keep, dis keep disruptors out of the zone. If. Oh, no, but no! The disruptor gets destroyed before it can connect. Dude, that's sick. That is so sick from Clem. He knows. He's like, okay, I don't have to split if I kill the Disruptor before it connects. Oh my gosh, that's disgusting stuff here. Liberator is using their anti-air attack, which is not something you see a lot, but splash damage is splash damage. That's a big Nova connection. That is a big Nova connection here. So resources lost are 24,000 for the Protoss and 20,000 for Team Clem right now. 
All right, fair enough. They're doing some pretty cost-efficient shenanigans. More adepts in the third base. They don't even have resonating glaives. I feel like they probably should. If they're going to be used this much on the harassment scale, they'll just pop it. But they don't. Nobody has any money right now. Neither Team Protoss nor Team Terran have any cash right now whatsoever. So I don't know. Maybe these are some of the sickest splits against disruptor attacks I've ever seen. So maybe. I don't know, maybe there is an advantage to Archon mode these days. Maybe in the early days there wasn't as much, but now people have figured it out. And hey, if Clem's playing Archon mode, it's pretty good. There's still 60 Interceptors here, but they're not being sent out to fight. I mean, part of that is because these are plus three, plus three Marines. They're little balls of death. Okay, that was a decent connection, but probes are just transferring through the <laughs> Defender mode circle there, getting murderized all over the place. Trying to bring the Interceptors in now to win this thing, but oh, the splash damage is really good. Not good enough, though. 30, ooh, 30 Interceptors remain, and Team Terran is backing the heck on out of there. Small drop here at the fourth base of our Protoss, and we're going to snipe down an Assimilator. That's pretty good. I mean, this still has 700 gas in it. I guess that's not that big of a difference, but Nova hit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very fresh, says Ugly. Oh, he feels like he's got this thing won. He's feeling confident at the moment. Does he now? Liberator setting up. Tempest getting some nice long-range shots on those Liberators. Not something we see a lot of these days is Tempest versus Liberators. But once again, just kind of standing in, killing Interceptors. There's only seven Interceptors remaining. And there is not enough minerals to replace all of them at all. There's a hundred minerals on the bank for both of these players. Another Nexus goes down. This fifth base continues to get denied. No fifth base at all today. Top left fifth base attempted from Team Protoss. Can they hang on to that one? It's a little bit further away than this right side. Has been. That Clem has been attacking non-stop today. The splits are sick. <laughs> 172 to 156 total supply. Interceptor count is 40. This Disruptor Colossus Carrier thing is actually pretty darn effective. I don't think it's going to win, but it's been pretty fantastic. I'm not going to I'm not going to sit back and complain about it to you at all. No sir, no how. Bottom right base is already up for Clem and Ugly. Top left, Liberator denying mining at this newest fifth base. Ugh. Uh, Starcraft very often comes down to economic concerns. And okay, all right, couple, ooh, couple Colossus. You can't split against Colossus attacks. Those just hit you, man. You can try to split against it, but it's such a wide swath. Ooh, this SCV. Bye, sir. Plus three air weapons coming in for, like, the all four Liberators that exist. Trying to... Nah, I'm just trucking back. So chase down, backing up. Chase all the way down here. I think he's trying to buy time for his bases to get up here, but... Yeah, the abject chaos here is just crazy, though. We do not see this much carrier versus Terran. This, maybe this is the new meta. I don't know what has... Like, what has compelled Protoss players to make these many carriers recently in this matchup? I would just chalk this up to EUTM shenanigans, but that's not what it is. Because, again, Classic was doing this at GSL just last week. So, okay, the Marine count is... Look, and BAM! Clem taps out! Suddenly, the Marine count is way too low and oh sure there's only nine available interceptors remaining but guess how many marines there are 13 and not all of them are here that's for sure some of them are trying to join the party one by one by one by one i guess four are here but wow dude these carriers though i must see how many kills they have 17 kills 11 kills 12 kills more 11 kills 16 kills there's so many with 11 17 11 11 12 12 i mean this has been absolute incredible carrier play here from this eu gm team member of the discord came in dropped it in said you probably want to cast this and you know what I gotta say, I think you're right. That is 
That is dead, dead impressive. Wow. So they get a win against uh, the, the micro here. Really feels like it was Clem. Here's the problem, though. Resources lost 38,000 to 33,000. That is how many Marines died today? 242 in 21 minutes. 28 Liberators. My gosh, that's so much dead Marine and Liberator. 632 Interceptors died, though. That's the winner. That is the winner of the most stuff that died in this game. And how many carriers went down? Eight. So eight carriers died. There were 10 of them at the end of the game. So good trades. Just overall good trades here. Sure, a lot of Nexuses died. Sure, the income wasn't super hot at this stage of the game. But when the Protoss player is on the other side of the map and you don't have anything to deal with the carriers, this base is going to die, this base is going to die, and suddenly it's a super, super uphill battle here for Clem and Ugly. So we saw that and decided just to back on out. It's 13 Marines and 3 Vikings versus 10 Carriers and 9 Disruptors. The Disruptor plays were sick today. They were consistently being sent out, consistently being sent out. And yeah, Clem dodged and split against 90% of them. But the 10% that hit were pretty effective. And just, again, as a zoning maneuver, just to keep the Terran army from just stimming forward and killing you. Because they have to worry about it. They have to worry about the Nova showing up and murdering all, all of everything. It's good. I mean, disruptors have always been used that way. I guess maybe not the very, very beginning. Not at the very, very beginning, but... Yeah, it was, it was pretty quickly figured out that even if disruptor shots are not connecting, they're still forcing the Terran to move away from you. And that's a good feeling as Protoss, because when they're stemming forward and you can't stop them from doing that, it's very scary. So, GG! Hearty congratulations to Team Protoss EU here. Moe's, I believe, is the name he goes by in Discord, but apparently that's not the name we're dealing with here. We have an ABT and a Teemo, <laughs> which uh, the full player names we'll put in the title. How about that? But GG, hey, you got a game you won against Clem cast on YouTube by someone with, I don't know, all of some subscribers. That's not bad. That's a good day, isn't it? I think it is. All right, so that's going to be it for me today. This has been a Falcon Paladin. Coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and an Archon Mode game. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.